and welcome to Everyday Extraordinary Women. This is Jessica Lynn Johnson, hello, hello. and I'm so excited to have her here today. Welcome back. We have our tea here. Cheers. Cheers. Good job. <laughs> so I wanted to just know more about how you came across solo theater? Like, how did you get started in it? What were you thinking? Were you crazy? When I got started with solo theater, that was, it was right when I uh, moved to New York City. You know, essentially I was like, I don't want to wait for the phone to ring. I want to be generating material, but I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew that I could play characters and I was a writer. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna use these talents and, and put something up on stage. So I wrote my first show, Oblivious to Everyone. I toured that show for about a decade and, and it oh grew gosh. and changed. Like it started out as a 20 minute version and then it grew to like 70 minutes. You yeah. obviously did not give up on that project. Yeah. Like you kept going and tweaking it. And I had to keep making it interesting for myself. Like I had mm -hmm. to keep discovering new things about the characters or um, that piece was all about um, racism, homophobia, uh, just prejudice, of uh, materialism, all kinds of different things. So that was always changing in society and how the media was portraying it was changing too. So there's always new material to add to the show and, mm -hmm. and to adapt it. Honestly, I just kind of, you know, became, I was like, okay, it's time to move into, into something new. And that's when I created my second show, Z. Z. So, yeah. All right. And was that here in Los Angeles? That was here in LA with uh, Terry Silverman. Um, was my director. I took her master class and it was a six month process of developing that show and that's about um, the LGBTQIA community and also um, healthy spirituality. So that's what that show explores. Oh yes. I wanted to know how you made the switch from a performer to being a teacher coach because you solely do that right now, right? I guess that started with David Magdoff, I think he's the first person that pops into my mind. David was very passionate about creating mm. free improv and community through the arts. Um, and so he approached me and asked if I would do my solo show uh, class under the umbrella of Monkey Butler. And I, he asked me like six times and I said no. <laughs> I said no over and over and over again. Not because I wasn't in cahoots with his mission, but because I didn't have faith in myself as a teacher. I was like, I, I'm a performer and I can teach for like a day, but I'm not a teacher, like I don't teach. So that finally I was just like, okay, yes, if you'll leave me alone, I'll do it, you know? And then when I when I did my first 12 week course, we set it up for 12 weeks of free classes, I just fell in love. I fell in love with, with teaching and, and with the students' stories. And, um, and there's something so magical about creating community like that through the arts that is free mm -hmm. so that money is never a hindrance because everybody has a story worthy of telling no matter what their monetary situation is. Mm -hmm. um, so I came alive in that process. I was wondering if you could just share with us like one or well, as many as you want, but <laughs> <laughs> five, million. five million obstacles that you had to overcome in answer to like obstacles well I'm my own obstacle when I have limited thinking or negative thinking or I'm trying to control um, the way that it should play out so for me it's a daily practice of, of waking up and, and giving my my day to God and surrendering and just being like I'm a vessel and show me what to focus on today and if that's mm -hmm. submitting to acting jobs great if that's you know doing principal work on an acting job great if it's teaching great you know and just um, staying open to to that kind of divine Leading. I'm very woo-woo, if you haven't <laughs> yeah. picked up on that already. Um, I am, I'm very spiritual and woo-woo, and I, I don't pretend not to be. It's too, too who I am. So, yeah. Share with us, what is the biggest thing you've learned as a solo artist and teacher? So, I, you know, I've said this to my, my students, that with solo theater, I think it, it's very unique in the sense that you have to show up for yourself in a way that you don't have to in any other genre. You know, mm -hmm. if you're in a a, a play that has a huge cast, you're going to show up because you have, you know, 10 other people relying on you and a director and all the tech people and like, all, you know, a whole production relying on you. And for solo theater, you have to show up for yourself every day. You have to show up and make you make sure you wrote that script and you're rehearsing your lines and you're working on your characters and you're doing the research and you believe in your story enough to get on stage or you don't believe in it, but you're going to do it anyway, whatever it is. And so for me, that's been the biggest lesson is is just showing up for myself and saying you're worthy of this <laughs> just, say, you know fake until you make it believe that you know and get up on the stage and, and share are there any other ways um in addition to when we wake up in the morning like telling ourselves that 
that we can show up for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to see the tapes of my first <laughs> performances of Oblivious. It was probably so horrible, but whatever. You know, I got up and I did it, and so that's an accomplishment in, its, in itself. And if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have gotten to, to do my show now or any of the other different accolades that came my way because I had to mess up. I had to fail. I had to, you know, work my way through it. So I think just having grace for ourselves that it's a journey, it's a process, we can change and grow along the way. It does not have to be perfect. In fact, it's never going to be perfect. What is perfect? <laughs> right. um, so just to allow ourselves that grace to be like, just play. Well, I love how you brought up the idea of surrendering to like something new, even if it's not what we expected. Yes. Because I feel like that has been my journey Ooh, yeah. this year. It's about, you know, taking those leaps of faith when our inner knowing told us to do something. And right. a lot of times it is scary stuff and it doesn't make sense. And best things in my life have come from that space of listening to my intuition even when it was scary even when it didn't make sense when it led me into the unknown what advice would you give to um any artists out there who are watching or who will watch later on the youtube uh -huh. show um if that are thinking about starting or writing a solo show what would you say? Well, first thing, if you're you know in, in Los Angeles, come to my class. It's free. So you can email me at soaringsoloartist at gmail.com or jessicalynnjohnson.com and sign up to be on my mailing, my mailing list. Um, and just come to class. It's free. Um, if that's not you know feasible for you, I do Skype sessions as well. But I think the important thing, wh whoever you work with, is just starting. Just start somewhere. I think that's the biggest obstacle for so many people is they just never start. They conceptualize ideas about what their show is going to be about and they talk about it a lot or yeah. they write something and shove it in a drawer and it's just start and, and let it reveal itself. Anything else you would add to anyone watching that has like this germ of an idea? Yeah, um, well this is a little bit of a different angle. I just sent out this email the other day about how we're all snowflakes. It's a little bit <laughs> cheesy but you know, I'm, I'm pretty sappy if you get to know me. Um, <laughs> But, but it's true, you know, like we, when you have this idea to blaze your own trail or go a different direction, trust that because you are, you're as intricate and unique as a snowflake and yet you are part of a beautiful winter wonderland of snow, <laughs> yeah. you know, and we're, we're all un unified, but we are all unique. And so I think again, yeah, trust your intuition and those, uh, that trailblazing idea that comes up, mm -hmm. follow it. It's, follow it's it. leading you to, to your path, to your highest path. To the next thing. Oh, but why that? Why is that the hardest thing to do? Right. <laughs> well, greatness isn't oh, easy. I know, right? So I just wanted to give a special shout out to Jessica for coming on, taking time out of her busy day to share with us. Um, thank you to you for having me. I was so like nerdy excited about this. <laughs> and then the flowers on the wall. I wish flowers on my dress. I was like, it's meant to be.